and gentlemen, the time is now. All right, welcome everybody at the press conference of the Heavyweight Grand Prix. My name is Mark Schaaf. Thank you all for being here. And of course, everybody watching the live stream worldwide. The Glory Heavyweight Grand Prix will take place tomorrow on the 9th of March in the Gelre Dome in Arnhem. And it will feature an eight-man tournament in the heavyweight division. But it also features two title fights. One of those title fights in the lightweight division with the champion here behind me, Tijani Bestadi, who is going to defend his title for the fifth time, or at least he's going to try to, against challenger Enrico Okeo. And we also have a title fight in the light heavyweight division where challenger Tariq Khbebes will take on the champion Donegi Abena. Uh, as I already said, thank you all for being here. We're going to split this press conference up in two parts. We first start with the title fights and later on we will bring on the eight fighters of the heavyweight tournament. If at home you want to join us tomorrow at the Gelre Dome, please go to glorykickboxing.com because there's still some tickets available. Now note that this press conference is worldwide or streamed worldwide. So it'll be in English. So if you have a question for the fighters, please stand up, say your name and the company that you're working for, but please do it in English. Now to start things off, Enrico, nice that you're here. You have a wonderful track record in your career. How does this fight against Tijani rate in between all the big fights you fought? First of all, hello to all you guys here in Amsterdam. Um, I'm glad to, hear be, uh, to be here and yeah, the title fight, it's for me very high. It's a dream of mine to be the glory world champion and it's a target, it's a target of mine and I'm working hard for this target, I deserve the target and now it's time to get the target through. Tijani, can you give us your thoughts on your fifth title defense and also on Enrico Keo, who thinks he has deserved to fight you? Um, first of all, thank you all for coming. Um, yeah, you know, it's a dream for him to, to become a lightweight world champion in glory. But tomorrow night, that will be his biggest nightmare. Um, you know, I, I'm glad that I'm here. You know, it's, it's, it's in the Gelder Dome, big stadium, big audience. Um, I'm taking this fight very serious, um, so I'm ready to go. I can't wait, and you know it's always good to fight in the Helder Dome. So, you know I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm energized, and I can't wait for tomorrow night. Thanks, Tariq. Uh, yesterday things got pretty heated between you and Donaghy. I was in the middle of it. I didn't flinch. Um, why do you want to fight Donaghy so so much? I don't like him. That's a clear answer. Donaghy, for you, you're going to defend your title uh, for the second time. Uh, you won your title against Maslobyev. He had to forfeit because of an injury uh, during the match. In the second fight, you fought Mo Tushasi, who, who stepped in uh, at short notice. Is this for you the first time that you can really show everybody that you are the true champion in that light heavyweight division? No, I don't think so. Tushasi is a good fighter as well. And tomorrow I have to show it again that I'm still the champion. Awesome, thank you. We'll throw it to, uh, to the media, so please stand up if you got a question and please do it in English. Um. <laughs> uh, Remy Munyaski um, for um, Warrior Co. Uh, first question is to, uh, to the, the guys that, where it got heated uh, yesterday. Uh, will it affect you emotionally uh, for the fight for tomorrow? Kubabes or Abena? Ik doe het wel in Nederlands, want uh, mijn Engels bak ik er niks van. Uh, ja, maar ik krijg hele verkeerde Tarik om zich heen. Juist, juist een agressieve Tarik, zoals al, mijn, zoals al mijn vorige partijen, is juist een hele scherpe Tarik, een hele gefocuste Tarik. 
Dus gaat hij morgen, gaat hij morgen krijgen. Als je een beetje normaal deed, had ik hem nog een beetje bespaard, maar morgen gaat dat niet gebeuren. So to translate for our worldwide audience, uh, Tariq just explained that he is going to face a real different Tariq, a really a sharp Tariq, and uh, he was easy on him yesterday. Same question for uh, Abena. We will see, you know. It's, it's common that people who can't control themselves or their emotion will make thoughts. And he's saying this and that. We have to see tomorrow. Check in, and we will find out. Of course, I will be there to do some comments, but uh, you guys were BFFs. Uh, what, what's now the story? We were never BFFs. That's what he said. First he said we were friends, and now we say we are enemies. For me, it does not matter. It's just business. We have to fight regardless, so we can talk all we want. We can say everything we want to say, but we're going to settle the score tomorrow, and still. Same question for you, Tariq. No more BFFs? Well, this man is uh, talk too much. Maybe I think I'm uh, Dr. Phil, <laughs> but uh, I'm not Dr. Phil, bro. I'm Tariq. <laughs> I'm uh, give tomorrow your own big lecture. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Emil from Stand Em Up, I got a question for Enrico. Enrico, uh, obviously outside of glory you fought very good opponents as well. Where does Tijani rank in the opponents you've faced? For sure, Tijani is one of the greatest fighters of the world. But uh, how he told already, I'm the old man, I'm the old guy with the old experience. He's the new era. Let's prove myself with the big experience, with the professional experience I have against a new era and show the world that I'm also can beat the new experience or the new era. Thank you. Question for Tariq. Tariq, uh, obviously uh, there is some bad blood between you two. You, were, uh, you had a good relationship before, but win or lose after the fight, will you shake his hand? Never. Thank you. Hello, Max here, Champs Talk. First of all, I got a question for Donegi Abena. Can we expect another spectacular walkout from you? Baby, welcome to the party. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Next up, I got a question for Tijani Bestati. You have a lot of experience in title fights now. Does your mindset change every time you have another title fight? Um, yes, of course. You know, um, I have a lot of experience now in title fights, in five round fights, um, and that's good. You know, for my for my for my fighting career, and each and every fight, I'm getting more experience. I'm feeling more comfortable in fighting five rounds. So um, yeah, and you know, we can fi fight five rounds, but if he goes earlier, then he goes earlier. You know, but you know, I'm I'm prepared for everything, and I'm prepared for the worst. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. Thank you very much. And last but not least, Enrico Kell, the Hurricane. You have more experience in minutes inside the ring. Is that going to be your key to victory tomorrow night? Let's see what will be the plan, what will be experience. On Saturday night, he got experience for five uh, round fights. In the beginning of my career, I did a lot of Muay Thai fights also for five rounds. So for me, it's not a problem to get my pace also over five rounds. So let's see on Saturday what will be my experience and what will be the experience of the fight. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, I'm Enes from TFT Morocco. I have a question uh, for Enrico. Uh, you're fighting against uh, Tijani. Um, he's a very experienced fighter. You're also a very experienced fighter, as we all know. Uh, what makes you think that after all those title defenses uh, from the Lion, uh, that you will uh, win against uh, Tijani? To be honest, I didn't saw the last fights, all the last fights of him, the title fights. I see a couple of uh, um, short videos of the fights, but I don't care about him. I don't care about him. I'm also prepared for the worst. The worst, I have a game plan. I have a very strong team behind me and I don't care about it. For the rest, uh, I just want to say, uh, home Morocco has uh, got your back, uh, Tijani, and we expect nothing but a win. 
شكرا بزاف Okay, guys, thank you so much for your questions. Please give it up for the four fighters that will be fighting tomorrow for the title. Enrico Kale, Donaghy Abena, Tijani Bistati, and Tariq Khbebes. And that gives me some time to change some things up here and call up the fighters for the eight-man tournament. Uku, Yuriendal, Levi Richters, Tariq Ozaro, Bahram Rajabsadeh, Nebil Kachab, Benjamin Adek Bui, Sufjan Laiduni, and Rico Verhoeven. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that we have everybody up here on the stage, so please give them one more round of applause, please. Okay, thank you guys for being here. Before I'll give you the microphone to ask questions to the fighters, I want to um, tell you something about the trophy that can be won tomorrow next to the $500,000. Um, this trophy will be taken home by the winner, and this is a special trophy because inside there are seven places for a ring, and every fighter uh, behind me has a personalized ring that he's going to bring in the tournament. So the first four rings will be placed, uh, that will be the losers of the quarterfinals, and then the, two, uh, the next two rings are the, the, the losers of the half finals. And uh, in the end, the winner takes all the rings, so he's also going to take all the rings of his opponent, which I think is awesome. Um, time for the questions from the press, so I'll give the mic to you. Hi everybody, Max here, Champs Talk. First question is for Tariq Osaro. We saw you train with Cyril Gaan in Paris. Will he be attending tomorrow night's event? No, we will not. Okay, thank you very much. Next question for Bahram. Um, a lot of people say that your height or your weight are going to be an issue during this Grand Prix, but how are you going to show everybody that it's going to be your strength? He says, I feel pretty normal, I'm comfortable, no problem. Thank you very much. Last question for Nabil Gesheb. You didn't have a lot of choice during the pick of the Grand Prix. 
Out of any fighter on stage, who would you like to see in the first round if you had the choice? Adak Boy, just like uh, like it is it is now. So nothing. Uh, Thank you very much. <coughs> Raymond Miyaski, Worry Talk. Um, Osado, your last fight uh, against Furhuva was maybe not your best fight. What can you tell the people uh, that you're going to have a different fight, a different Osaro inside the ring tomorrow? The story stays the same. Uh, I come to choke bombs. I've left, I've right. They go down. I win. If but this is what stand. you said last time, yeah, and it didn't, didn't happen. That's what I just said. The story stays the same. Nothing different? Nothing different. Okay, okay. Um, Leif, a question for you. Um, you left your, uh, your trainer maybe a couple of weeks ago. Did something change in your preparation? Yeah, I had to, I had to make uh, the hard decision to uh, leave my trainer. Um, but it's, uh, it's the right decision. Um, everything stay, stays the same. Um, so I feel great, yeah. You were with him for like your whole career. Um, will it emotionally affect you when you have to fight? Um, no. Like I said, it's a really, really hard decision. And uh, I, I was training for him with him for about uh, 12 years. Um, but everything stays the same between him and me. It's the same, you know, it's like a father figure for me. For, yeah, for me. Um, and winning this tournament will also be for him still. Mm, nice. Um, for Kahab, uh, Kahab um, I think that a lot of people underestimate you. I believe you are a strong fighter, you're young, you're talented. What can you say to the people that underestimate you? Tomorrow is the day, that's it. You have to watch, be there, and uh, work. Last question for uh, uh, Bayram Rajasade. Um, you're the lightest, uh, you're not the, the biggest in the eight men. Um, what can you tell the people that's going to happen tomorrow? Yeah! <laughs> he says they'll see it tomorrow. <laughs> Kilomon az olmasına bakmayarak elimden geleni ortaya koyacağım. He says I'm not going to look at my weight, I'm not going to look at my height. I'm just going to show it tomorrow. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Emil from Stand Em Up, question for Laiduni. Laiduni, uh, the first fight in the tournament you're going to be fighting against Rico. Do you like the fact that you're going to fight versus the champion in the first round, or would you rather have seen him later in the tournament? Um, <coughs> Sofiane, donc tu vas affronter uh, Rico uh, dans ton premier donc uh, quart de finale. Est-ce que tu aurais, uh, est-ce que tu es content d'affronter Rico dans ce quart de finale, ou est-ce que tu aurais préféré l'affronter un peu plus tard dans le tournoi? Franchement, je suis vraiment content de boxer Rico au premier tour. Pour moi, c'est une finale avant la finale, et je suis ravi de le rencontrer. Um, I'm very excited to fight Rico in the quarterfinals. Uh, that's the, the fight I, I wanted, so I'm, I'm really pleased about it. All right, question for Rico. Uh, Rico, the notion is from the fans uh, around this tournament is that if you don't win this tournament, that you can be seen as a legitimate champion as well. Do you share this notion as well? Well, for me, like I said before, the, I think in a tournament, not always the best fighter wins because a tournament Everything can happen. You can hit an elbow, you can hit a knee, you can get injured, uh, you can win a fight, but still have to pull out for whatever reason. So, yeah, like I said, not always the best guy wins. I think the, the most legitimate way of measuring strength is both going into a, into, a tra a training into a training camp and then face each other. And then I think that's when you truly see who is the, the very best at that moment, at that day. But I do believe, like, I'm excited, and I am going to take this Grand Prix home as well. So, for me, this is the cherry on the cake.
All right, thank you. Question for Cookie. Cookie, you seem like somebody that thinks everything through. So this question is for you. Um, if you have to rank this tournament and the championship against each other, what do you think uh, holds the highest regard for you? Uh, I think if you look at the belt and glory now, uh, it, it's more valuable because Rico has it for a very long time. But in the overall, winning a Grand Prix, I think it's more bigger in an achievement way uh, than winning a belt. But if you look at our belt in the heavyweight division, it's a more valuable thing at the moment than the Grand Prix. Question for Adek Bui. Of course, you and Rico are teammates now, uh, your uh, potential opponents. Um, you said that if there's somebody that could beat Rico, that's you. What makes you so confident in that? Hello. Uh, it's always the same question. Uh, we're trained for a long time ago, and uh, I mean it, man. I'm the only one who knows him better from here. He's the only one who knows me better. So I'm really, I, I see him like the real champion because he's the real champion. He defended his title so many times. So this is what I think. If, I'm, if somebody can beat him, I'm the only one who can beat him. Otherwise, he's going to win this and that's it. This is how I think. All right, thank you. Yes, I'm from uh, Sports Zone. Uh, I have a question for you, Sofian Laiduni. Um, Rico, don't you used to fight against fighter uh, able to go on distance? His last fight was against fire, uh, fighters uh, like heavy hitters. Uh, do you think that it can help you tomorrow night? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I uh, Rico used to fight against heavy hitters and not uh, against uh, uh, opponents able to go on distance. Uh, does Sofian think that it can uh, help him to grow night? Um, <coughs> Rico a l'habitude d'affronter des, uh, des poids lourds qui sont très uh, puissants uh, avec un peu plus de, de poids. Est-ce que tu penses que du coup ton profil est un avantage par rapport à Rico demain soir? Je pense que dans la catégorie même, mon profil est un avantage. Donc. Euh Oui, je pense que oui. Uh, I think my style, my profile is uh, an advantage in this tournament because, uh, uh, you know, I'm quite uh, fast-paced, like a uh, heavyweight. Question for Rico. Rico, Saint Michel, Remy Bonjaski, and so on, uh, won K1 World Grand Prix. Uh, tomorrow night, you have a huge opportunity to put you on the gold conversation. Uh, do you think that it can help you to be in this kind of conversation to win this kind of Grand Prix? I think the most important thing is it is not up to me if I'm part of the conversation. So it's up to the fans, right? So even though we talk about who is the GOAT of all time, who's the very best, and it's not up to me. Everybody keeps asking me, like, what if you win this Grand Prix? Are you then the very best because you're the champ for 10 years and you made the Grand Prix? But it's not up to me. For me, like I said, throughout all these years I've been like working on this cake and like this Grand Prix is literally the cherry on it. So I'm so happy and so satisfied with everything I've been doing and look at this, this room, it's filled with media, filled with people. So I'm so excited that we got the sport to this level. So, and the Grand Prix are back. So like I said, I'm gonna put the cherry on the cake tomorrow and Let's continue from there. Question for you, Tariq. Uh, you had a training camp with Cyril Gann, uh, and during one uh, video, you said that his uh, profile is quite similar to Rico Verhoeven. Do you think that this training camp with Cyril can help you if you have to face Rico again? Let's just start with my first fight, and then see who I face in the second fight. And probably if he also makes it on his side to the finals, then we can talk about that. But for now, I'm facing Baram tomorrow first. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for your answers. Please, I would like to invite you to go, uh, all, all eight of you in front of the stage uh, with the, uh, I'm sorry? Oh, no, with, the, with the, uh, the trophy in the middle so that everybody can take a picture from you and we'll get a last round of applause.
All right, everybody, give it up for your eight participants in the Heavyweight Grand Prix. Nabil Kachab, Kuki Ozaro, Levi Richters, Rico Verhoeven, Uku Yuriendal, Benjamin Arekboui, Bagram Rajabsadeh, and Sufyan Laiduni. Thanks, guys. Okay, so that wraps it up for the questions for now. Later on, in a few minutes, we will go to the official weigh-in with Tim Hughes. But before we go there, I have some big announcements to make because I am um, really happy that I can tell you the two uh, uh, Glory uh, events that are coming up. So, uh, Glory 91 will take place in Paris on the 27th of April and we have a wonderful headliner there. It's a world title in the welterweight division when Andy Samuelir takes on Chico Quasi. And then the next event will be on the 19th or the 18th of May when Glory returns to Holland in the RTM stage in Rotterdam where we will have a um, title fight in the middleweight division when Donovan Visser will take on Ulrich Bokeme. So, that's it for now. In a couple of minutes, we will start with the official weigh-in with Tim Hughes. I'll thank you for your time, and I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, and that's not the only big announcement to make because there's more and that has all to do with the coins here in the middle. I'm going to stand in the middle because of the, the, uh, the, 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 the sound, <laughs> yeah, the sound of the speaker. Can you please tell us everything about the, that you hold in your hand? Yeah, I think uh, one year ago uh, we started uh, from Royal Dutch Mint to uh, partner with uh, Glory because of course uh, it's really great that uh, after more than 10 years there's again a heavyweight tournament and I think uh, today uh, kickboxing is really mainstream I know quite some managers and ministers who take kickboxing for uh, stress relief and of course uh, for example a lot of girls get uh, self-defense trainings uh, to, uh, through kickboxing so kickboxing today is really mainstream it's really great that we have again a heavyweight tournament after more than 10 years. But I think it's also the right time to honor four people, four kickboxers, who won the Grand Prix already more than three times. Peter Aerts, Ernesto Host, Sammy Schild, and Remy Bonjaski. And uh, therefore we decided uh, as Royal Ditch Mint to partner with uh, Glory and to produce a limited set of four coins, including these four uh, kickboxers. And I'm very proud that on behalf of Royal Dutch Mint, I can hand over the first copies to the son of Peter Art here on the left side of me, and uh, Remy Bonjaski. It's a real honor for us to do the handover here during this ceremony. Thank you very much. Yeah, and those, those coins, it's not something, you know, that's... Uh, small eh? because only really really big sports stars get these coins. For us the story is uh, most important and uh, what, these story, what these people brought to the Netherlands in our opinion they are the founders of modern kickboxing like we have today like I said how it's mainstream these people started after their career sports schools for children etc so uh, we are really proud that uh, together with them we could create uh, something really great to honor them today. All right. Thank you. Nice, Remy. Give us your uh, first reaction. Well, uh, my first reaction, uh, first of all, will be uh, thanks, uh, of course, to Dutch Mint and, uh, of course, Bert and his team, because they made it possible uh, to make this, but 
I also want to thank on behalf of all the, uh, the other three uh, uh, big fighters, big legends, like, uh, like he said, Sam Shield, uh, Peter Ars, and Ernesto. Of course, uh, the son of Peter is uh, also here. But on behalf of them, I want to you know, thank also them, because also because of them, I, I went into kickboxing to do my thing. And I'm so happy about it because it, it took a long time. It took a long time before we were uh, like honored in, in this country. I will st I'll tell you a small story. Um, I left Japan in 2003, uh, just after I won the, the K-1. And there were more than 200 uh, journalists just waving to me, uh, wanted to ask me questions and all that. And then I came back to, to Holland and only uh, Ate5 was there, it's a uh, local uh, news company, was there to interview me. But look at, it, look at it where we are now. Now we are in a, in a big stadium in Holland and a, a whole lot of journalists are here to, you know, to, to talk about the sport. And I'm happy and I'm grateful to have this moment. Thank you. Awesome, thanks. What can you say on behalf of your father, Peter? Yes, well, uh, yeah. Oh. Hello, my name is Marciano, and uh, I'm here on the behalf of my father, and uh, I would like to uh, thank the Dutch Royal Mint and uh, Glory Kickboxing for um, this amazing, prestigious award. And um, yeah, he was, he's very honored about it, and um, yeah, he'd like to thank everybody. On behalf of the legends, also from the other kickboxers like Remy, Sammy, and Ernesto, of course. So uh, it is a big honor. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for this great gift and also uh, something to recognize, be recognized in uh, in the sport because uh, it's a beautiful sport. Thank you so much. It's time to wrap it up here. I'll give the mic to Tim Hughes for the official weigh in. All right, uh, thank you, Mark, and thank you, all of you that are here for the official weigh-ins for uh, the Glory Grand Prix, which is coming up tomorrow night in Arnhem, one of our favorite places to be here in the Netherlands, really one of our favorite places to be in the entire world. You know, I was just thinking while the coins were being presented to Remy and Peter Art's son, when you think back at the tradition of the Grand Prix for the sport of kickboxing, it's been three decades since that cornerstone of the sport was laid. And most of those names have become household names by their first name to many glory and kickboxing fans around the world. Remy would be among them, but just think about it. Peter, Alistair, uh, Semi, Mirko, Everyone knows immediately who you're talking about tomorrow night. The latest chapter in that bit of history for kickboxing is going to happen right here in the Netherlands with $500,000 up for grabs on the eight-man tournament. I just want to remind everybody, too, that if you are in the Netherlands, we still have seats available tomorrow night. So go to Glory Kickboxing. That's glorykickboxing.com and get your tickets. Don't miss this slice of history. Uh, one more note, and we're very excited about this. Of course, you know in the Netherlands you can watch Glory Kickboxing on Video Land. You can also find out in the rest of the world where to watch it at glorykickboxing.com. But a big announcement. We have two new television partners for 2024. In France and in Belgium, watch Glory on DAZN. And for the first time in five years, Glory Kickboxing is going to be live on Bally Live. If you're watching at home in the U.S., download the app and be watching not only live but free Glory Kickboxing in the United States. And we're very excited that more fans are going to get a taste of what we've been knowing for over 10 years now, the most exciting combat sport in the world. Let's get to the weigh-ins. And first of all, introducing behind me some important people. First of all, our glory girls, Stephanie, Bella, Tara, and Karina. Give them a big hand. Also, our head of talent operations, Robbie Timmers, is here. And representing Vaughn, overseeing our weigh-ins, Gino Engelhart. Uh, one more time, give them a big hand as we get things started here for the official weigh-ins. I think a little bit of history has already been made tonight. If you were watching the press conference, it's the first time I can safely say ever that the name of Dr. Phil was invoked in a glory way. And am I wrong about that? <laughs> the other truth is that emotion 
is a universal language. We saw it from Bahram Rajabzadeh during the press conference. Even if you didn't understand the language, you understand the emotion. And there's plenty of that going into tomorrow night. All right. We're going to get right to the action here tomorrow night at the Hell Redome. Uh, we have a reserve bout for the eight-man tournament. For those that aren't familiar, that means we have two fighters that will compete to be on standby in case one of the other fighters is unable to advance to the semifinal or the final round. So a big moment for two fighters, Jihad Kapenik and Michael Blazovic. Let's get Kapenik onto the stage first, two heavyweights. Kapenik here from Turkey. He'll bring with him a record of 21 wins and six losses, 15 of those wins coming by way of knockout. This will be his fourth glory appearance. In 2021, he became a World Muay Thai Super Heavyweight Champion. He goes by the nickname of the Ottoman. Is Kapenik here to get weighed in officially for the uh, event? There he is. Jihad onto the uh, scales first. Debuted in uh, Copenhagen all the way back at Glory 29 in 2016. One ten point four for Kapenik. Now Blazovic here from Warsaw, Poland. As a professional, eleven wins, six losses, one draw. Five of those wins coming by way of knockout. It's his second appearance, and interestingly enough, his first appearance came against this same opponent. They told us yesterday in our uh, interviews that it was not very satisfying for either of them. It ended in a split decision. One fourteen point nine for Blazovic. He's a winner of six of his last nine. These two have promised not to leave it in the hands of the judges tomorrow night here in the Netherlands. By the way, Blazovic, a European pro heavyweight champion and a Pol Polish national champion, the winner of that reserve bout will be on standby in case one of our eight other fighters in the Grand Prix is unable to continue. Now the first of four quarterfinals. It is Uku Yuriendal and Levy Richters. Ranked number six in the Glory World Rankings, Uku Yuriendal is here with 20 wins and eight losses. He has the shortest average fight time in the bracket coming up tomorrow night. His fights normally go just a little over five minutes. He weighs in at 113.9. He had an impressive second round TKO over Batahari, just 47 seconds into the round in Bulgaria that earned his spot. His opponent, Levy Richters. He'll have some fans, I'm sure, here, hometown, Utrecht, Netherlands. He is ranked number two in the Glory World rankings. 15 wins with only one loss. Many feel he is the future of the heavyweight division. The tallest man in the bracket at six feet, seven inches tall, 112.9 for Levy Richters. The judge, he stretched his win streak to three, including a unanimous decision over Tariq Osaro at collision four. There's a lot that goes into the thinking of these fights. Obviously, if you don't win your first one, you can't get a chance to go into the semifinal. But you also want to make sure that uh, you are ready, both with power and uninjured, going into the uh, rest of the tournament. Quarterfinal number two, Bahram Rajabzadeh taking on Tariq Osaro. Rajabzadeh, number seven in the rankings from Baku, Azerbaijan. Listen to this record, 65 wins and just one loss. A 90% career knockout ratio. Yes, he's the smallest man in the bracket. He may be carrying the most power. 99.3 kilos for Rajab Zadeh. His opponent, Cookie Osaro, here out of Nigeria and ranked number three in the rankings. 25, three and one as a pro, 13 knockouts. All five of his glory wins have come by knockout. And statistically, he is the most elusive in the bracket, absorbing just 4.4 strikes per minute in his appearances inside the glory ring. 124.7 for Osaro in the second quarterfinal of the Grand Prix Tournament. He comes in a winner of four of his last five fights.
Anything can happen tomorrow night. That's what makes these Grand Prix tournaments so unpredictable, so exciting. Quarterfinal number three. Benjamin Adegbui and Nabil Kahab. Adegbui is here, fighting out of Bucharest, Romania. He was the last to enter the bracket. Currently ranked number nine in the Glory World rankings. 35 wins, seven losses. 20 of those wins coming by way of knockout. He's been away from the glory ring for about 10 months. Mr. Gentleman last competed in uh, Essen, Germany at Glory 86, 119.3 for Benny. Now, his opponent, Nabil Kahab. No doubt the heaviest man in the bracket as he enters the glory ring. 27 wins, four losses, four career knockouts. This will be his fifth glory appearance. He solidified his spot by qualifying in Rotterdam at Glory 90 over Nikola Filipovich. The Tank, 157.1 for Nabil Kahab. Also the youngest in the bracket, by the way. The winner advances to the semifinals of the Glory Eight-Man Heavyweight Grand Prix in Arnhem tomorrow night. And then the last of the four matchups of the quarterfinals, Sofian Laiduni and Rico Verhoeven. Let's get Laiduni onto the stage first. He comes in ranked number five out of France, 35 wins, two losses, one draw, 17 of those wins by knockout, undefeated in two prior glory appearances. And again, if you're looking at differences between these heavyweights, he has the quickest hands in the bracket, Landing on average 17 strikes per minute. That is four times the average of the other combatants. 104.5 for Laiduni. And now the man that needs no introduction. There was a lot of excitement when he agreed to enter the bracket. It is our reigning champion, the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. Rico, of course, the most glory wins, the most glory knockouts in the bracket as a professional. 61 wins with 10 losses, 20 of those wins coming by way of knockout. His win streak, now at 21, dates back more than a decade. 122.8 for the champion Verhoeven, who wants to add that Grand Prix so that he too can be added to that first name basis for kickboxing fans worldwide. Can Rico do it tomorrow night? Laiduni stands in his way first in the last of our quarterfinals. Eight men. Only one will be crowned glory Grand Prix champion. Now I just want to take a second to let you know that as much attention, and it's, a, it's appropriate, that the Grand Prix is getting a lot of attention tomorrow night, but as much attention as it is getting, there are two title fights that are probably gonna be among the most hotly contested bouts we've had in the glory ring, certainly in the last year, but maybe ever. The first one is in the lightweight division, and don't blink or you're gonna miss this one. It is Enrico Kale taking on the champion, Tejani Bistati. Kale, the challenger, the number one ranked in the division as far as challengers goes. 53 wins, 15 losses, two bouts scored even with 31 knockouts. It is that experience that he told us yesterday he thinks will be the difference in this fight. And if you've never seen Enrico fight, there won't be any guessing as to why his nickname is Hurricane. That's kind of the way he goes in and he blew through his last opponent. Armin Hambarian with a third round TKO. A winner of eight of his last 11 fights. He is a World Max Tournament champion himself. 69.7 for Kale. Now, the reigning champion of the lightweight division fighting out of Morocco, Tajani Bestadi. He told us just moments ago in the press conference 
how excited he is to be fighting here in the Netherlands. His record, 25 wins, four losses, five knockouts inside the glory ring for the Wonder Boy, getting ready to make his fifth defense to the belt. 69.6 for Bestati. His win streak at six. He had a successful defense over Japan's Kaito at uh, Glory 87 in Rotterdam. Little bit of a difference in height, but Kale told us yesterday in our fighter meetings that he's used to that. Most of the time, he's the smaller man, and it does not intimidate him whatsoever. Five rounds for the lightweight championship of the world. Then a great super fight also scheduled in the middleweight division. This is one that was uh, scheduled two other times and is finally going to happen. It's a fight between Elias Hamushi and Ivan Galaz. Hamushi, also fighting out of Morocco, will be fighting out of the black corner tomorrow night, ranked number 10. 33 wins and six losses. It's only his second glory appearances. His debut last September came after a two-year absence, and his excitement following that fight was felt by all. 84.8 for Hamushi, a two-time European champion. Now his opponent, Ivan Galaz, is here from Santiago, Chile. And ranked number six in the glory world rankings. Quite a career, 58 wins with 10 losses, 15 of those wins by knockout. El Terrible made his debut in 2017 at Glory 48, and he weighs in at 85 even, 85 kilos even for Galaz. Again, Galaz told us yesterday he's, he was ready for this fight twice before and finally is going to get to finish. It happens in the Netherlands tomorrow night. Three three-minute rounds scheduled. Then the co-main event of the evening. You saw some of the fireworks already in our press conference. This is another fight that was scheduled twice before and is finally going to happen. A lot of frustration, but maybe one of the most anticipated title fights we've had in some time in the light heavyweight division. It's Tariq Kababes taking on Donaghy Abena. Kababes, the reigning interim champion. He got tired of waiting for the belt, stepped in to get the interim belt at 49 wins and 10 losses, his eighth glory start. He won that interim belt with a fourth round TKO at Collision 5 last summer. He also carries the nickname The Tank, and he weighed in at 94.6 kilos. Now, the reigning champion from Suriname, Donaghy Abena. Abena is here with a record of 27 wins and nine losses. This will be his 10th glory appearance. He stretched his win streak to three with a successful defense against Mohamed Tushazi at uh, Collision 6. His debut came all the way back in 2018 at Glory 60 in beautiful Lyon, France. He weighed in. Speaking of Abena, at an even 95 kilos. This one will be fireworks tomorrow night. He was asked by one of the reporters that's with us here today if he would shake Abena's hand following the fight tomorrow night. His answer was simple, never. Five rounds for the light heavyweight championship of the world. I'll tell you something. I know fans are excited about this around the world, but those of us behind the scenes that have known this was coming, that this card was in the works, that these talents would be put on display on a single night, haven't been more excited about a glory than ever. And if you don't have your tickets and you are within driving distance tomorrow night of Arnhem, make sure you're there couple of other announcements before we wrap things up for those of you at home and here in the Netherlands. Two events already on the calendar beyond this one. Glory 91 coming up April 27th. We return to the Dome de Paris where we sold out in September of last year. Andy Semelier will be defending his belt against Chico Quasi in the welterweight division. And then Glory 92 coming up May 18th at the RTM stage in Rotterdam. Donovan Visa defends his title in the middleweight division over Ulrich Bokemi. 
Things are off and running for 2024. Don't miss any of it. We hope to see you tomorrow night. Netherlands and the world, are you ready for glory? All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now.